short. Can we take that to the another advisor group, the, the scientific advisory board that created the the standards for Act Two? I, I, I think I said it right, and see if they can do something with uh, take a look at fluoride contaminated soils and work toward. Even though it, it, it won't be here now, work toward establishing some kind of a a standard. Well, I, you know, I've been saying yes to that request for entirely too long, and so now this time I mean no. it. <laughs> so now you say no, right? No. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Kirk and I will will make sure that we get that on the next agenda for the SAB, um, unless their their next Not meeting the next. is too. Huh? Not the next. Uh, is that tomorrow. Like All right, that's plenty of time. <laughs> following the following agenda, okay. and we'll begin working internally uh, on those. We have done some preliminary work, and it was actually in the part of the previous bill policy describing what some of the tolerances of the various plants are. Um, so we can. You have you have my word that before that by the next time the tab meets, we'll we'll have something to report back as progress beyond I've been needing to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything until 7867, which is the bar of section anything before that. that if you uh, start reading uh, <coughs> Section C, the restoration requirements, concern that that may preclude using one borrow pit for multiple sites. It will seem to be in the best interest of everyone that if we have a good borrow pit established, that we'll be able to use that for multiple sites. And well, I, I can tell you that our intention is not only to let it be used for multiple sites, but multiple operators can use the, the borrow kit as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. But someone's going to be responsible for it, and it's going to be restored when it's no longer being used for, for pad construction. Yeah, somebody will have another perm. Right? Well, it'll be attached to their bond. And this, and this just isn't for multiple well pads, this is for conventional wells. It, it, and correct. Project areas, right? Yes, this section um, applies to all operators. <laughs> Next section, 7868. seems that most, if not all, the requirements under that this section are already adjusted in Chapter 102. Any comment? Want to need to replicate that here? Steve, could you help me out with this one? Um. <clears throat> It's been our understanding that the oil and gas pipeline operators wish to be under our jurisdiction. Um, because in the past there has been some sometimes overlap with different DEP bureaus enforcing uh, one or two violations. And Usually, it is our people that are responding in the first place whenever there's a, any kind of complaint or a call that the words oil and gas are used in a sentence. Our people go out and respond, and it's, it's um, the purpose of this is mainly to kind of carve out, even though you're right, um, a lot of this used to fall under uh, the watershed, waterways and watershed 
uh, agents or bureau. The purpose for this section is to kind of carve out our um, our jurisdiction over specifically oil and gas pipelines. So and that was the expressed by the chairman of. It, and, and I also think that some of these provisions, like for the, the, the conservation of topsoil, it's, it's a provision that's contemplated in one of two. This adds some greater specificity uh, for those requirements. I don't recall the highly, the, the highly visible flagging to identify um, sensitive areas as a requirement in one of two. Um, backfilling of trench trenches, and I don't know that that is, is Completely specified within 102, but nonetheless uh, addresses infiltration rates we think are important um, issues that are perhaps unique to putting in pipeline. And obviously, this industry is putting in substantially more pipeline than any other any other um, water line or whatever. F is a bit of a incorporation of a 105 requirement. So, and, and again, also, as Steve mentioned, the idea that Chapter 78 the oil and gas program manages these lines pursuant to these rules in addition to move to 102. So, I suppose one of the, the comments I would, I guess, would ask is have if there are areas, if there are rules in here that are, that are your opinion, not, not reasonable, that's what I'd rather focus in on as opposed to, because I do think that some of it is trying to be, to provide additional clarification as to what our uh, interpretation of, of what some of the 102 requirements are, is in addition to having some provisions uh, to avoid potential impacts to sensitive areas, like I mentioned with uh, the wetlands. Okay, so, so these are meant to complement 102 and provide a scope of authority within Chapter 70 within oil and gas to, to regulate correct these aspects. These particular aspects, but they would still be required to comply with all the requirements in Chapter 1. Yeah, this would be my next question. Yeah. So, yes, Mr. Chairman, you said it far better than I did. Thank you. Okay. Succinctly. Now and, and proposed, but just as a 
a proposal because it does not seem to me that these records need to be kept particularly long after the, the line has been decommissioned, so to speak. Back up under some of the U68A's got uh, there was a comment, another comment on that regarding uh, horizontal drilling uh, for gas pipelines and the need for department approval with an additive, new additive review. Mm -hmm. What do you perceive the department being able to do given the notification that they need to change and, and use an additive that is not on the approved list? It's on the approved list. Once it's on the approved list, you can just use it. Um, so then we need to change that statement? Regardless of whether it's on the... So here's what the statement is then is you, we only need to pray this approval if it's not on the approved list. Correct. Did we say that? The fluid must be approved prior to use. Right. And all approved fluids shall be listed on the website. That doesn't say anything to the, I presume you're giving verbal approval to this or not. Oh, I, okay, 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 I got you now. And may be used without prior approval by the yeah, department. So that's something that so they can change over quickly and keep going. Discussions we've had so far is that there are um, lists of, I'm not sure if it's ASTM or, or what it was, but an organization that has identified additives that are appropriate to be used while constructing uh, water wells. And right now that's a, that's a guidance document we're looking to. Um, so, you know, depend, I, I guess obviously it would depend on what was ultimately being proposed. Um, I, I will tell you that this is, I, I want to have an additional conversation about this section as well, um, particularly when there has been significant losses of, of bentonite during the directional drilling process, um, and or, or significant pressure drops. Those are indicative of, of the fluid leaving the, the bore and potentially getting into to groundwater resources. So it seems like there, it, it's worth a conversation about HDD in what time uh, operations may cease and be evaluated for um, containing perhaps the, the extent of, of uh, the fluid loss. <coughs> Those plans, when you look on 
the, the previous uh, 12 months waste reporting and you've got 71% direct reuse uh, at the next well site, then another 14% uh, or more being taken to facilities that clean it and uh, for, for reuse and the rest basically going to disposal wells. Uh, I would say that's demonstrated uh, compliance with reuse requirements there, but the uh, but, but please yeah. I mean you know just refer to it's um, chapter ninety five, section ten um, B two one through four, which specifies the minimum um, information that needs to be provided in a wastewater reduction strategy. I can go over those uh, it's pretty, it, it is not well specific. It is not well specific. Correct. So it just asks for like being an, updated annually. It uh, asks for percentages, basically. It asks for a characterization of the operator's wastewater stream, including chemical analysis, TDS concentrations, and monthly generation rate of flow back and production fluid at each natural gas well. Correct. A description of